they'll double the number of connections in their brain just from their interaction with that information. But if they don't review it, if they don't repeat it, if they don't think about it, uh, those circuits prune apart within hours or days. So, Hello and welcome to the Pacific Channel. I'm your host, Steve Doherty. Have you ever wanted to become super conscious? Ever wanted to be a super learner? Ever wanted to have a profound mystical experience? If you have, you'll enjoy this audio clip of Dr. Joe Dispenza explaining how. But to be fair to you, he doesn't talk about how to do it until the very end. In this video, a host tells Dr. Joe that she has just been to a progressive workshop. Then she'll talk about how she is fascinated with the concept of the now moment, the present moment. So naturally, she asked Dr. Joe next, right now in this now moment, what are you bringing in or what do you have coming through right now? Dr. Joe isn't going to answer the question directly, but instead will say how he is all about service and how his goal is to awaken people to how powerful they really are. If you are new to his work, through Dr. Joe's method of meditation, people who do this work, especially those who go to his week-long workshop, are getting miraculous results, such as healing stage four cancer, healing muscular dystrophy, and even recovering from blindness. The way they are doing this is through a specific protocol of steps that involve moving energy from the body to the brain, getting the brain, body, and heart into coherence, and then using an elevated emotion which will create gamma brain waves that are off the charts, which will then induce a mystical experience where the person is in a state of complete and absolute bliss. But it's not that easy to get to that state, and it can take a while. But every time you meditate, you're getting closer and closer to that ability. The next step after that is to feel those elevated emotions of bliss and love in your daily life. Next, the host is going to comment on the power of repetition to rewire our brains and how repetition is so important. So that prompts Dr. Joe to start talking about what repetition is, what remembering is, and then how to remember things better by reviewing them soon after learning them. He'll make the point that if you cannot explain something to a stranger, then you haven't learned it yet. But if you can, then it is hardwired into your memory. But still, of course, if you don't review it once in a while, those memories won't stick. Next, Dr. Joe will talk about the way he likes to teach his community and how he likes to make it fun, make it fresh, and mix science with examples. He's also going to say that if you understand the what and the why, then the how gets easier because you can assign meaning to what you are doing. Let's listen to Dr. Joe explain all of this now. I'm your host, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let's begin. Oh, it's just amazing. Honestly, I was up at your progressive workshop a couple of weekends ago now, and I want to just thank you so much for what you've helped me access within myself and um, yeah, all the other people there. I mean, you are doing sterling, important work. So, you know, if I can be of assistance to getting, getting more people to know about what you're doing, I'm really happy to, to, to do that for you. Um, fascinated about the now moment. Um, and here we are in a now moment and people watching this or listening are gonna be in different now moments. I love the way that you play with all of that as well. And I think that um, your new book, Becoming Supernatural, is, talks about lots of things, but I'd like to start off with right now, in this now moment, what are you bringing in? What, what have you got coming through right now? Well, um, you know, my whole thing is service. Uh, my passion, my interest, of course, is to contribute to this uh, evolution on this planet and hopefully get us waking up a little bit more about how powerful we really are. And, uh, and I'm honored and privileged to have the opportunity to do that um, as much as I can. And uh, actually, I never get tired of it. No, talking to people about what, what you do and en encouraging us and what you, what you, you do a lot of repetition, which I thank you for. And I really get this now that the power of repetition is so important for us to rewire our brain, right? Yeah. Well, look, I mean, uh, 
Repetition uh, actually allows nerve cells to fire and wire together. If learning is making new synaptic connections, then remembering is maintaining and sustaining those connections. And some of the research shows that if you just take people and you have them concentrate on one topic for about an hour study, that at the end of that hour, they'll double the number of connections in their brain just from their interaction with that information. But if they don't review it, if they don't repeat it, if they don't think about it, uh, those circuits prune apart within hours or days. So if learning is making new synaptic connections, then remembering is maintaining and sustaining those connections. And for me, I just know that when I'm in an audience, I want to make learning fun. I want to make it fresh. I want to mix science with examples. I want to come at it as many ways as I can. But when people start to understand the concept, uh, I think it's so important for them then to turn to the person next to them and explain it. Because if they can't explain that model of understanding, then it's not wired in their brain. But if they can explain it, they're beginning to install the neurological hardware in their brain in preparation for an experience. So then when they have the experience, when they apply that philosophy, that theory, that knowledge, and they get their behaviors to match their intentions, experience enriches those philosophical theoretical circuits in the brain and then all of a sudden the experience causes the brain to make a chemical and that's called a feeling or an emotion. Now we're teaching our body chemically to understand what our mind is intellectually understood. So knowledge is for the mind and experience is for the body. And in that moment, the person's beginning to embody the truth of that philosophy. And so repetition then allows them to understand what they're doing and why. And if you understand the what and the why, the how gets easier because you can assign meaning to what you're doing. And when you assign meaning to what you're doing, you have more intention behind what you're doing. So I like to do it so that nothing is left to conjecture, nothing is left to dogma, nothing is left to superstition. You understand what you're doing and why. And, and I think science is the language to do that. Oh, absolutely. And you've got reams and reams of, um, of uh, proof really i mean you've had people plugged in during meditation you were talking us through the different levels of um of brain white waves about i'm fascinated but the that the beta brain wave is really fast but so is the gamma one but it's a yes. different fast yeah. frequency right but we have to go through the slow ones to get to the yes super fast. so i mean i mean it's a great a great question i mean um you know, your brain's job is to create meaning and coherence between what's going on in your outer world and what's going on in your inner world. And because our senses plug us into the environment, everything you're seeing and hearing and smelling and feeling and tasting, all that information has to be integrated by the brain. And, and it takes awareness to do that. So the moment we become aware that we're a body in space and time, that we are connected to an environment, and we're aware our brain waves go into what's called beta brainwave frequency and it's mm -hmm. kind of a fast frequency it's kind of when we're conscious uh there's nothing wrong with beta it's when we concentrate it's when we learn but when we get a little out of balance we get a little stressed um or really stressed <laughs> uh the brain goes into a very very fast arousal state what was called high beta and high beta is even a faster frequency and that's when you're fearful or when you're anxious or you're worried or you're angry or aggressive or judgmental or resentful or impatient or pain as you're in pain or you're suffering or even depressed the brain tends to idle at a very fast frequency and and that's good for the short term like if you're being chased by a predator but it's not good for the long term and some people get stuck in those states so then the whole purpose of meditation is to get beyond the analytical mind. And what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. So it then requires then people to begin to slow their brain waves down and they move from those beta brain waves or the high beta brain waves and they begin to relax and they close their eyes and they, they're no longer perceiving as much sensory information because they're not seeing anything or hearing anything and they're, they're playing music in the background and they're not getting up and they're moving, they're not moving around, they're not eating or or tasting or smelling, the less sensory information to the brain causes the brain to move into alpha. But, but we're looking for a very specific type of alpha, very coherent, very organized alpha. And it turns out when you take your attention off anything material and you go from a narrow focus to an open focus and you sense nothing material, something immaterial, energy or frequency or nothing, the act of going to an open focus or a divergent focus begins to cause the brain to start to become more integrated. It becomes more holistic, it becomes more coherent. So then 
if the body starts to fall asleep and the mind stays awake, now you're in theta. And that's kind of like a hypnotic state. This is when you're very suggestible to information. So our research shows that when people go into that slow state of low alpha or theta, there are systems that cause repair and regeneration switch on, right? Mm -hmm. And then something quite unusual happens to a lot of our students. All of a sudden, the body gets super aroused, like they connect to this field of information, this frequency, and all of a sudden, their brain goes into gamma brainwave patterns. And now, they're getting an arousal, but the arousal is not coming from some stressor in their outer world. The arousal is coming from the sympathetic nervous system releasing energy back up into the brain. So now that kind of strong rush of energy causes us to become super aware, super conscious. And now we're paying attention more to what's going on in our inner world. And that's why things like super learning and, and profound moments are, are uh, and super conscious and aware moments are connected with, with, uh, with gamma. And it turns out we can actually induce that state now. And um, we actually know even the words that can even stimulate it. So. so Dr. Joe said that he wants to teach in a way where nothing is left to conjecture, nothing is left to dogma, and nothing is left to superstition. I think all of us who are drawn to his work really appreciate that. He is one of the best metaphysical teachers there is at bridging the gap between science and spirituality. Next, Dr. Joe talked about how your brain's job is to create coherence from what's going on in your inner world to what's going on in your outer world. The way I usually say this is that your subconscious mind is always seeking cognitive congruence, meaning that it strives to make sure that all of your beliefs fit well together, whether or not those beliefs are helpful to you. What your subconscious mind does not like is cognitive dissonance, where you have worrying beliefs in your mind in other words, beliefs that don't match or fit or because some new piece of information came in that doesn't match your belief system. This is exactly why it's so hard to get out of a cult once you are in it. I know because I was in one. This is why if you show new facts and data to someone who doesn't believe in what you are trying to prove, 99% of the time they will reject the facts and data. So again, how do you achieve that super conscious state of mind? How can you become a super learner and have a profound mystical experience? Meditate in a way where you take your focus from matter to energy. This is why Dr. Joe has people focus on an energy center, which is matter, right? And then focus on the energy outside of their bodies. It's called divergent focus or open focus. Convergent focus is focusing in on matter and 3D. Divergent focus is focusing on the space around you from that place of nothingness and only pure consciousness, the fifth dimension. Next, what will happen is that you will drop down into the low alpha or theta brainwave state where your body is asleep and your mind is awake. This is where healing and repair occurs. This is why any meditation that you do, whether you have a mystical experience or not, is very beneficial. But if you can hold on to that state of being long enough, all of a sudden you may get super aroused and connect with that field of information or frequency and your brain waves will go into the gamma brainwave patterns. It is at this state of mind that you can have a profound, super conscious, super learning, mystical experience that will quite literally knock your socks off. And that's how you become super aware, super conscious, attain super learning, and have a profound mystical experience. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Our channel's goal is to make it to at least 100,000 subscribers so that we can improve the content and offer you more things. Please share this video with your friends and comment below. Also, we now offer group coaching sessions. It's only $30 a month, which Honestly, for what you get and learn is a fantastic deal. Go to our website and watch the testimonials and see for yourself. Just to give you an idea, the normal price is supposed to be at least double that amount. We don't know how long we can do only $30 a month, but if you sign up at that rate, you'll be grandfathered in and your price will never change if you don't cancel. Please check the date and time in the description below along with how to register for it. And now, 
I'd like to give a shout out to Jenna Olivia. Keep up the great work and never give up on becoming healthy again for your children. You can do it. Don't forget who you really are and your ability to manifest perfect health. That's the end of this video. So if you have any questions, please ask them below and I'll do my best to answer them or leave a comment about what you think about this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.